Manchester City, a decade ago, a club on the periphery of England's elite. Now, a dominant force, claiming five of the last six Premier League titles. But their reign atop English football has brought more than trophies. It's brought scrutiny, accusations, and now, a legal battle that could reshape the sport's future. The Etihad Stadium, a fortress of footballing brilliance, finds itself at the heart of a storm. The Premier League, once a stage for City's triumphs, has transformed into a legal battleground. At the heart of this clash lies a complex web of financial regulations, accusations of wrongdoing, and a battle for the soul of football itself. On one side, Manchester City, armed with a legion of lawyers and a steadfast belief in their innocence. On the other, the Premier League, determined to uphold its financial rules and protect the integrity of the competition it oversees. This is not just about football. It's about power, money, and the very principles that underpin one of the world's most popular sports. The outcome of this legal showdown could have far-reaching consequences, not just for Manchester City and the Premier League, but for the entire footballing landscape. As the legal teams prepare their arguments and the world watches on, one thing is certain. The beautiful game will never be the same again. This is more than a legal battle. It's a cultural moment, a defining chapter in the story of modern football. Manchester City's success has been fueled by significant investment, transforming the club from relative obscurity to European giants. This financial might, however, has drawn scrutiny, particularly regarding financial fair play, FFP, regulations. Introduced in 2011, FFP aims to prevent clubs from spending beyond their means, ensuring financial stability and a level playing field. The core of the dispute lies in the interpretation and application of these regulations. Manchester City stands accused of circumventing FFP rules, particularly those related to associated party transactions. These transactions, involving businesses with direct or indirect links to the club, have come under intense scrutiny. The Premier League alleges that City inflated the value of such transactions, artificially boosting their revenue and obscuring the true extent of their spending. The club vehemently denies these allegations, maintaining their compliance with all financial regulations. They argue that their commercial deals are conducted at fair market value and that their success is a testament to strategic investment and shrewd management, not financial impropriety. The outcome of this legal battle hinges on the interpretation of complex financial regulations and the burden of proof. It raises fundamental questions about the effectiveness of FFP, the balance between financial prudence and ambition, and the very nature of club ownership in modern football. The crux of the legal battle revolves around the concept of associated party transactions. These transactions, often involving sponsorship deals or other commercial agreements between a club and entities with pre-existing ties, have become increasingly common in modern football. While such transactions are not inherently illegal, they can be used to circumvent financial regulations, particularly those aimed at preventing clubs from spending beyond their means. The Premier League alleges that Manchester City engaged in a systematic effort to inflate the value of these associated party transactions, artificially boosting their revenue and obscuring the true extent of their spending. This, they argue, gave City an unfair advantage over their rivals, distorting the competitive balance of the league. Manchester City, however, maintains that their commercial deals were conducted at fair market value and that their dealings were transparent and above board. They argue that the Premier League's accusations are unfounded and that their success is a testament to their shrewd business acumen, not financial manipulation. This dispute highlights the challenges of regulating a global sport where vast sums of money change hands, often across international borders. It raises fundamental questions about the role of private investment in football, the balance between financial prudence and ambition, and the very definition of fair play in the modern game. The legal proceedings have cast a long shadow over Manchester City, threatening to tarnish their recent successes. The allegations, if proven, could result in severe penalties, including point deductions, transfer bans, and even expulsion from the Premier League. The uncertainty surrounding the case has also impacted the club's operations. Transfer dealings have been conducted under a cloud of suspicion, while sponsors and commercial partners are closely monitoring the situation. The club's reputation, carefully cultivated over the past decade, has been called into question, 
potentially impacting their global brand and commercial appeal. Despite the pressure, Manchester City remains defiant. The club's hierarchy, from the owners to the manager and players, have presented a united front, publicly proclaiming their innocence and vowing to fight the allegations. The club's supporters, too, have rallied behind their team, dismissing the charges as a witch hunt and a conspiracy to undermine their success. The outcome of this case will have profound implications for Manchester City, both on and off the pitch. It could define the club's legacy, shaping their future, and determining their standing within the global footballing community. Section 5. The Premier League's Perspective Safeguarding Competitive Integrity The Premier League, as the governing body of English football's top flight, has a vested interest in upholding the integrity of the competition. They argue that their actions against Manchester City are not about targeting a specific club, but about protecting the principles of fair play and ensuring a level playing field for all. They maintain that financial regulations, such as FFP, are essential to prevent clubs from gaining an unfair advantage through excessive spending. They argue that Manchester City's alleged breaches of these regulations undermine the competitive balance of the league potentially depriving other clubs of the opportunity to compete on a level playing field. The Premier League's stance has been met with mixed reactions. Some applaud their commitment to upholding financial regulations and ensuring a fair competition. Others, however, view their actions as heavy-handed and motivated by a desire to curb the influence of wealthy clubs. The outcome of this case will have significant implications for the Premier League's authority and reputation a successful prosecution of Manchester City would reinforce their commitment to financial fair play. However, a failure to prove their case could undermine their credibility and raise questions about their ability to effectively regulate the financial dealings of their clubs. Section 6. A league divided the voting rule controversy. Adding fuel to the fire is a controversial voting rule within the Premier League. This rule, which requires a two-thirds majority for certain decisions, including the appointment of investigators for disciplinary matters, has drawn criticism for potentially allowing clubs to protect their own interests. Critics argue that this rule creates a conflict of interest, as clubs could potentially vote against investigations that might implicate themselves or their allies. This, they argue, undermines the independence and impartiality of the Premier League's disciplinary processes. The Premier League, however, defends the voting rule as a safeguard against arbitrary decisions and a reflection of the collective ownership model of the league. They argue that requiring a supermajority ensures that any actions taken have the support of a significant portion of the clubs. This controversy highlights the inherent tensions within the Premier League's governance structure. It raises questions about the balance of power between the league and its clubs, the potential for conflicts of interest, and the need for greater transparency and accountability in decision-making processes. Section 7. Fans caught in the middle. Caught in the crossfire of this legal battle are the fans, the lifeblood of the sport. For Manchester City supporters, the allegations have evoked feelings of anger, betrayal, and a sense of injustice. They see their club as a victim of its own success, targeted for daring to challenge the established order. The uncertainty surrounding the case has also created anxiety and apprehension. The prospect of severe penalties, including point deductions or expulsion from the Premier League, weighs heavily on the minds of fans who have invested their hearts and souls in their club. This case has also ignited broader debates about the role of money in football, the influence of wealthy owners, and the very soul of the sport. It has forced fans to confront uncomfortable truths about the commercialization of football and the potential for financial irregularities to undermine the integrity of the game they love. The outcome of this case will have a profound impact on the relationship between Manchester City and its fans, shaping their perception of the club, the Premier League, and the sport itself. Section 8. A Moment of Reckoning for Football Governance the Manchester City case represents a watershed moment for football governance, exposing the complexities and challenges of regulating a global sport awash in money and power. It has brought into sharp focus the need for robust financial regulations, transparent governance structures, and effective mechanisms for enforcing rules and ensuring accountability. 
The case has also highlighted the inherent tensions within football's governing bodies, often torn between the interests of their member clubs, the demands of commercial partners, and the need to uphold the integrity of the sport. It has exposed the limitations of existing regulatory frameworks and the challenges of policing a globalized game where money flows freely across borders. This case has sparked calls for reform, with many demanding greater transparency, accountability, and independence within football's governing institutions. There is a growing consensus that the current system is no longer fit for purpose and that a fundamental overhaul is needed to restore trust and ensure a level playing field for all. The outcome of this case and the response of football's governing bodies will determine the future direction of the sport. It will shape the balance of power between clubs, leagues, and governing institutions and define the role of money and regulation in the global game. Legal experts have closely followed the Manchester City case, offering their insights and analysis of the complex legal arguments and the potential implications for football governance. Their perspectives provide valuable context and highlight the intricacies of this landmark case. Daniel G., a barrister specializing in sports law, noted the unprecedented nature of the case, stating, this is probably the biggest case that the Premier League has ever brought against one of its clubs. It's a very complex case, with a lot at stake for both sides. Dr. Katerina Pijetlovich, an expert in sports law and governance, emphasized the potential for this case to set a precedent, stating, the outcome of this case will have significant implications for the way football is regulated, not just in England, but potentially globally. The involvement of leading legal minds underscores the significance of this case and the far-reaching consequences it could have for the world of football. Looming over the proceedings is the Court of Arbitration for Sport, CAS, the highest court for sports-related disputes. Manchester City, if found guilty by the Premier League, has the right to appeal the decision to CAS. CAS has a history of overturning decisions made by sports governing bodies, including those involving financial fair play. In 2020, CAS overturned a two-year Champions League ban imposed on Manchester City by UEFA, highlighting the unpredictable nature of such appeals. The potential involvement of CAS adds another layer of complexity to the case. It underscores the challenges faced by sports governing bodies in enforcing their own rules and the influence of external judicial bodies on the governance of sport. The Manchester City case could have significant implications for the relationship between sports governing bodies and CAS, potentially influencing the balance of power and the autonomy of sporting institutions. The Manchester City case serves as a stark reminder of the challenges facing football regulation in the 21st century. The influx of vast sums of money, the globalization of the sport, and the complex ownership structures of many clubs have created a landscape ripe for financial irregularities and ethical dilemmas. This case has exposed the limitations of existing regulatory frameworks, often struggling to keep pace with the evolving nature of the sport. It has highlighted the need for greater transparency, accountability, and independence within football's governing institutions. The outcome of this case could pave the way for significant reforms, potentially leading to the creation of a global regulatory body, the strengthening of financial fair play regulations, and the introduction of more robust mechanisms for investigating and punishing wrongdoing. The future of football regulation hangs in the balance, and the decisions made in the wake of this case will shape the landscape of the sport for generations to come. The Manchester City case transcends the boundaries of English football, reflecting a broader crisis of governance and accountability within the global game. It has exposed the vulnerabilities of a sport grappling with its own success, struggling to balance the demands of commercialization with the principles of fair play and sporting integrity. This case has sparked a global conversation about the soul of football, prompting introspection and soul-searching within the sport's corridors of power. It has forced fans, administrators, and stakeholders alike to confront uncomfortable truths about the state of the game they love. The outcome of this case, and the actions taken in its aftermath, will shape the future of football on a global scale. It will determine whether the sport can find a path towards a more sustainable and equitable future or whether it will succumb to the pressures of greed and self-interest.
The world is watching and the beautiful game stands at a crossroads. The decisions made in the coming months and years will determine its fate.